and welcome to the functional forum different kind of an intro here for you uh this week thank you so much to my friend megan walker she hosted me on one of her conferences um a couple weeks ago and made that great intro for me so i thought i would put it here on the forum really excited to be with all of you it is the first monday in december uh january will mark seven years uh since we've been doing the forum it's been an incredible journey and i'm super excited uh for today because we're going to hear from some exceptional physicians uh and uh, practitioners on the front lines who are doing great work and innovating on the front lines of functional medicine delivery but we're also going to get super practical because we need to get practical because the profession has taken some hits this year because of COVID and there's some incredible opportunities for us to move forward and take our rightful place in healthcare. And uh, wherever you're listening from, um, whatever you're doing, I think there's gonna be a lot of value here this evening. So I'm just going to share with you um, a little bit uh, tonight. I wanna say a special, um, special thanks to anyone that's watching this at a meetup. We have some really, 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 that's three really, so you know it's big. We have three, we have a really, really exciting stuff happening in 2021 with regard to the meetups. And we are gonna triple down on our efforts to make it easy for practitioners to get together. And one of the things that we've seen recently actually is though, although there are reasons why meeting in person is not working, obviously because of COVID in most of the world, there are some really exciting things where meetups are happening and are spreading quicker than they used to because of the geographical limitations going away. And so if you are interested in meetups, go to meetup.functionalforum.com uh, to register. We hope that by April we will have um, we will have a fully integrated new technology stack where you can actually engage with practitioner communities all over the world. It's coming very soon. Watch this space. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about your 2021 detox program. We've got a lot to get to, but why is this important? Like why now? Why detox? What's going on? This seems like the least important thing. Well, no, it's clearly the most important thing, right? This is from April 4th this year. Dr. Ari Vojdani at the PLMI event showcased even back then, why do people with SARS-CoV-2, some people get a serious infection, some people get a mild infection. Why is that? And if you look right at the top here, exposome. If the exposome is low, you have no infection. If the, you know, if you have, if the exposome is high, you get a serious infection. So the exposome is absolutely critical. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about detoxification. We're talking about the exposome is the total amount of things that you're exposed to from your environment. Now that can be toxins. And certainly most of us are very fluent in understanding how toxins come into our environment, but there are other things that you can be exposed to. And this is a slide from a presentation I gave last December. So this time last year, I was in the UK giving my talk called The Community Cure for the NHS that we brought out on January 1st. You know, we have we had the loneliest generation in history even before COVID started. So this time last year, millennials were lonelier than any other generation. Look at this in the bottom left. Um, social isolation exacerbates mental health problems and is blamed in part for deaths of despair from drinking, suicide and drug overdoses. In a UK survey, nearly 22% of millennials have zero friends. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a massive emergency and this is part of the expo zone because as we know, if you read my book, health is a biopsychosocial bio uh, issue. Right. And you can't solve a biological problem, a biopsychosocial illness with a biological input. Right. We've been trying that with pharmaceuticals for years. If your issue is biopsychosocial, you can't solve it with a purely biochemical intervention. And that includes a detox program. 
right? That includes a detox program. If the goal is purely biological, right? You're going to improve the function of the detoxification pathways in the body. If that is the goal, you know, you have to think that is a biological input. We really need to affect the social environmental, right? We need to get people to change behaviors at home, how they interact with toxins. We need to deal with the psychological aspects of toxic people and those kind of things. And this is the strategy. And we can see just how important groups are when they are married to uh, the biopsychosocial model. Groups can increase self-efficacy on an individual level, increase self-efficacy, self-regulation of emotions, mindfulness, engagement, self-monitoring, self-health-directed behavior, skill acquisition, right? How many times have we said that being healthy is a skill? This can happen in groups and there are incredible benefits to interpersonal health, organizational health and larger community health. And that's why we're gonna be talking about group detox. We're gonna be talking about virtual group detox here today. And if you haven't read the book yet, The Community Cure, you can get it at thecommunitycure.com. If you go to thecommunitycure.com slash audio book, um, you can actually download the audio book right there. So let's start to talk about your full 21, uh, your 2021 detox program. It's December. So, you know, if you're into Chinese medicine, maybe you're going to wait until spring for a detox. Some people like to do it in January. I'm going to leave it up to you. But ultimately, what we want to do is get every practitioner that watches the functional forum set up in some sort of way to bring people into a process to build their immune resilience uh, through detoxification. Now, if you have questions about anything that I've said or about anything you're about to hear, you can tweet me at hashtag functional forum. I'll be keeping a lookout during the live show for questions and we'll be dealing with those at the end. So first up, we're super excited to have Dr. Liz Lister here on the functional forum. She's never been on the functional forum before. She's been doing this for 20 years. She's Dr. Liz MD online. She's a hormone specialist, but we're gonna talk about why she's been running these group detox programs and things that she's learned Super interesting interview. A warm welcome to the show, Dr. Liz Lister. Welcome, Doc. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Really excited to have you here on the Functional Forum and uh, excited to jump into your hormone practice and how you developed it. But let's, I guess, first, every functional medicine doctor has some sort of story about what led them to leave conventional medicine and sort of what got you on this path. So how did you end up here? Absolutely. I definitely have my story. I am a board certified OBGYN, and I basically kept narrowing down my practice, first leaving major surgeries and, and just narrow, narrow, narrower. And at the same time, attending anti-aging conferences, A4M and the like learning about the functional forum, for example, and just educating myself. And patients were asking me questions. They wanted to know more about bioidentical hormones. So the tail kind of wagged the dog a little bit and I went and learned about it. And now my practice is entirely devoted to basically hormone consulting. I am the hormone expert on people's team, teams of their doctors, anything to do with hormone balance, whether it's menopause and perimenopause, it's a huge focus of mine. And also I take care of men and anything related to hormone imbalance, weight difficulty, losing weight, fatigue, uh, or just the hormonal aspect of all sorts of different illnesses. Beautiful. Well, you know, this month, because it's December, we're talking about detoxification and a lot of practices are sort of setting themselves up for that conversation in January. Why is, why is the detoxification conversation interesting and relevant to someone who focuses on hormones? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, relevant in several ways. First of all, when people are losing weight, they're mobilizing the toxins that are stored in their fat tissue. Therefore, it's very important to understand detoxification, be able to talk about it with patients, and to have a tool kit that's easy for them to use and follow so just the process of achieving hormone balance requires some aspect of detoxification. And then also it, it's chicken and egg. It works the other way too. 
sometimes if I do other, I'm aware of some doctors who do what I do, who always start people out with a detox program. I don't do that in 100% of my patients, but for sure, if what we're doing isn't working, by all means, then I say, look, we need to do a little a mini intervention, a brief detox program and uh, help get you back on track. What are some of the, the clinical signs that you look for to, that would make you think, okay, you know, this person is, uh, needs to, you know, we need to take a step back and do more of this fundamental um, detoxification processes? Mostly if they're not responding the way I expect them to. If they're not responding to hormone replenishment in, in a usual fashion, having symptoms resolve at a particular pace that I expect, or for sure if they're having the opposite effect, if they're having difficulty losing weight and I know that they're doing everything right and we're, at least by the numbers, it looks like we're getting things balanced, but they're not getting the results clinically. That would also be an indicator for me. And also just if they're not feeling well and we've tried other methods, I would absolutely use a, a detox program as, as part of the treatment. Yeah, we're in this interesting sort of bind in functional medicine where we understand how important toxicity is. And if you've been through, you know, different training modules, you know how important it is. But also we have this sort of like, you know, detox fad culture that, you know, has popped up in the last right. 10 years at the same time. How do you help your patients to sort of navigate that world and, and pick things that are going to really help them on their journey towards health and sort of take them away from, um, you know, to, to, to steer them clear of things that, you know, may not be that useful for them, but sound similar. I would say it's a combination of approaches. Uh, the detox kit that I use with my patients, I like it a lot. I feel that it addresses the, the liver detox part of it. It, uh, it, it reverses the phases. It, it supports phase two detox detoxification first to kind of clear the pathway and then goes into the phase one of detoxification. So I like that method of doing it. And then people can use parts of the products as ongoing support, depending on what they need. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Everybody can Google detox. It's a bit of a, a, a lingo word used at this point, but we know that it's an actual physiologic process that people have to do in order to be really at their top healthy level. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, talk us through, uh, you know, how you've integrated this into your practice. You mentioned you have a kit. Uh, I also know, you know, from your site, you've, you've done a lot in sort of setting up patients on what to expect within the program. And then I know that there's some things that you've done to really keep people engaged in between visits. What are some of the innovations that you've used on that end? And how does that, ha how does that help the patient have a smooth clinical interaction with you? Okay, I'm going to tell you all of that. And you're also reminding me that I have my own story, which was I resisted the whole idea of doing a detox program for a really long time. I, I come from a conventional allopathic medical training background. My parents are both doctors. And uh, so I really resisted doing a detox program. Finally, I thought, you know what, I really should just try this out. And I definitely liked the results that I felt. And it was recommended to me to do, the, and it makes sense to me for the body's health to do a detoxification program. I, I do a seven day detox to do it twice a year. And I always like to do things with company. I like to do things in groups. Anytime you're doing any type of program, community support is always essential and very, very helpful. So I put it out to my patients and I got a small group who we did the program together. And it was great. It was wonderful to exchange tips and recipes and support and just kind of monitor each other's progress. And then over time, I was doing basically January that other than the fact that it's when everyone jumps on the bandwagon as far as health and weight loss. In addition to that, it, it really is a good time to detoxify after all holidays, whether it's travel, uh, drinking a little bit more than normal, eating foods that I don't normally eat, uh, it's actually a little better this year that I'm not going to other people's parties and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but in any case, using these types of uh, uh, kind of a jumping off point in January and then also in the summer, towards the end of the summer. And what I did this past year is I did one in January and it was great, a nice group. 
then uh, it got to be, we went to shelter in place in March, April. And by May, I realized people were floundering just a little bit, really could use kind of a reset. And so I put the word out and that was my biggest group ever. It was a big, big response. Patients really want to do what their doctor recommends to help them. Mainly, I communicate with my patients through an email uh, newsletter. That's the number one way. That allows me to track who's interested. If they click on a link, I can tell and I can send them more specific information. So I have a, a CRM system for the newsletter that allows me to do that. Also, leveraging social media. I'm not a giant fan of social media. It's, it's difficult for me as a doctor. How much personal access do I want my patients to have to me? However, people like it. They, they want some degree of access. And I, I discovered with this last group that creating a Facebook group is very easy. It's a great way to post questions. And when you allow people into the group, you can, you can have them agree to some rules, one of which is don't share personal information <laughs> that you wouldn't share, generally speaking, on Facebook. So yeah. people can ask questions. They wanted me to recommend a, a probiotic or, or some type of a, a product that would fit with what we were doing. And that was a question that would benefit the whole group. And I was able to post the answers and not have to be helping people one at a time. Absolutely. Do you do you use those times of year as like an onboarding into the clinic? Uh, do you find a lot of patients start there and then become new patients once they've had a chance to like feel interacting with you and see that you're knowledgeable and under, you know see people get better during that program? Yes, that definitely happens. I have not worked that as much as I could. I, I, I still love my day job, which is being in the office, seeing patients. So <laughs> I try to leverage as much help as I can with uh, other people, virtual assistants who can help me uh, create the materials. Uh, I, I was given a lot of materials to use uh, by my rep with the kit that I use. Uh, that was extremely helpful. So everything I can do to leverage help on those uh, skills that we're not taught all that in medical school. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, look, yeah. I guess I just want to acknowledge you for, you know, for, for treading the path that we've been talking here at the Evolution of Medicine since 2014. We recognize that there was probably the most straightforward path to actually practicing this medicine every day was, you know, taking advantage of technology, um, having a kind of a low overhead model, getting out of the insurance game because of its complications, and then, you know, yeah. really starting to uh, get yourself uh, to a point where you could like live the life that you're living now, which is treating patients, making a difference, spending time with people and going through that to doctors who haven't kind of um, managed to get there yet. What would you, what would you say to them? Getting what you want starts with identifying what you want. Having more time, in my opinion, requires letting go of insurance medicine. It's not as hard as it might seem. I had a transition period. I worked for another doctor and that was my transition time that I used to be able to, uh, at first I felt bad about not taking insurance, but now I absolutely don't feel bad. I give patients so much value. That's my commitment. My commitment is to give them abundant value, give them more than what they're investing. And they know that they're investing in their own health. They're coming to me for, care that they cannot get within the insurance system. So my advice is grab your courage and go for it. Awesome. And how about for doctors that have made the switch and are doing this, but have not really jumped into doing any sort of group delivered services? Oh, it's, it's, first of all, it's fun. Second of all, it's efficient. You are gonna be able to help more people by being in the group setting. One of my early concerns was privacy. That's not difficult. People understand to not share private medical information in a group setting. It's, I, I was really worried about it, but it, people get it. They're, everyone's used to social media at this point. Uh, it's easy to control comments when I write blogs on my website, that type of thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that difficult. So group is absolutely a wonderful way to help more people leverage our knowledge. 
Is there anything specifically about the detox group that you think leverages that peer-to-peer -peer dynamic more than you know other types of groups that you could run? I think so because people share how they're feeling. They share solutions that I might not think of. They might have issues and ways that they're feeling on the program, on a detox program that just didn't happen to be something that I experienced. And then someone else in the group will just pipe up and say, oh, well, I had that and here's what I did and it worked great. And then they feel better. So I was like, fantastic. And then I learn from my patients as well, which is very fun and very rewarding. Beautiful. Well, look, thank you so much for coming to be on the, the Functional Forum. And I really appreciate, uh, you know, sharing some of your wisdom with the, the practitioners here. You know, if you are building practice, no matter what niche of medicine that you are practicing, if you're practicing in a functional, integrative, naturopathic way, toxicity is going to be a burden in some patients. And if patients aren't responding in the way that you want them to respond, super easy way to build out detox groups, support people, use your newsletter, use your social media to get people into these groups and give them an opportunity to really feel what it's like to interact with you. Such a great example of that. Dr. Liz, thank you very much for your time here today and uh, really thank appreciate you. being part of the Functional Forum. All right, so a great start there. Thanks, Dr. Liz Lister, for being part of it. Lots of great information there. I mean, a lot of the themes that we've been talking about for seven years here, right? Using, uh, using technology, um, using email automation, using social media, the Facebook group, this is what practitioners in our practice accelerator are doing as they are building successful practices. Now, I wanted to have this, this uh, an, an example like that on with Dr. Lister because I think it's just aspirational for any doctors who are watching to think that could be my life. Like I could just have a practice where I don't have to interact with insurance and I can make money and I can just you know get what I want from practice. But I also, there's one thing in there that I'm starting to have a little bit of a uh, different thought about, which is like, can you run a successful practice on insurance? And I think that you can, it just have to, you know, do things slightly differently. And as an update, I just want to share with all of you that the 21, 21 changes in coding that are coming our way move a lot towards time-based coding. And you know they don't know what you're doing with your time. You could be talking about supplements. You could be running groups. Like there's a lot more leeway into non-face-to-face, non-physician time. And so I wanted to bring in another guest here, um, another practitioner we've never had on the forum. And hopefully this is someone that you know if you are just getting started with functional medicine could be aspirational to you as well. By the way, if you have questions, keep them coming in. I see a couple coming in already. Hashtag Functional Forum on Twitter, and uh, I'll answer them after this next speaker. So I want to just uh, bring in the next speaker. Her name is Martha Southwick. She's a nurse practitioner from Utah. And I think that if there's some of you who, you know, the idea of following someone like Dr. Lister, where you have like a whole website and program and book and celebrity, you know, it's too much. What about people just getting started, right? Who just want to see, okay, could I do this in um, a small private practice? And so check out this interview with, doc, uh, with uh, Martha Southwick. So a warm welcome to the Functional Forum, Martha Southwick. Welcome, Martha. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to have you here. Uh, so share with uh, our audience, I guess, to start a little bit about your uh, your practice in, uh, in Utah. Okay, I have, it's a nurse practitioner run uh, independent clinic that I started about two years ago. I came from a traditional clinic and then through the course of having cancer, the office that I was at shutting down, restarting, I started on my own and growing, um, I take insurance and have some cash base, but just gradually shifting into more and more functional as I, my skill set improves. Yeah. What was the, what was the, uh, the sort of reason why you decided to, to move towards functional medicine? Well, I'd already been doing a lot of bioidentical hormone co compounding. I went to a conference and it was about a year after I was diagnosed and uh, had a finger amputation for melanoma. And so I was at a conference and said, I am gonna live, I'm gonna move forward. At that point, when they took off my finger, they said I had a 50-50 and I decided I had a lot higher odds. So I wanted to start doing a lot more research and, and I'd already been doing a lot of um, just personal growth stuff. And so I jumped in and started an A4M and started 
taking some classes and jumped in. My cancer came back in 2016, so it slowed my progress down quite a bit. And um, so 2016, end of 2016, 17, I was in a lot of treatments, um, really trying to jump into alternative treatments for the cancer. At that point, I really had a very low survival rate. And the practice I was in, he pretty much went bankrupt. It was a traditional OBGYN practice and it went bankrupt at the end of, two seven, end of 2017. And so in 2018, my cancer had stabilized. It wasn't growing. I only had a couple of lesions left. And so I took all my funeral money and I started my own clinic. <laughs> Such an amazing story. So I know initially you were doing a lot of, you know, one-on-one -on -one functional medicine care, but there was always a, a bug to, to expand it into the group care. So where did that come from? And, and uh, what does that look like? What, what's been that journey to expand it? One is my schedule is really busy and I, and I get tired of repeating the same thing over and over and trying to be able to bring a functional type practice, the mindset to people who can't afford a $300 visit um, plus that in many cases, and really trying to get to those people that really wanted to make life changes but couldn't afford it. And so the group idea really started to um, excite me. And this was clear back in probably 2017 that I you know, started first kind of hearing about it but I didn't have the office management. I didn't have the support to be able to do that. And when I started my own clinic, I have an excellent office manager who's really good at doing um, a lot of computer tech stuff that is not my forte. She's good at organization, good at, good in, good at getting things going, um, structure for me. And so it left me with just doing the class pretty much. And so it really made it much easier for me. And then I could just focus on doing the class and getting through the jitters of, of seeing 10 people at the same time, um, worried I would make a mistake, whatever. And it just, it got more and more comfortable the more I started doing them. Yeah, I think there's so many great points to take out of there. First is that, you know, we've always said, whether it be in the group visit challenge or in the book or otherwise, when it comes to groups, you need to have a group visit champion, right? You need to have someone whose role it is inside the clinic to advocate for groups, to organize the groups and to be like on the front lines of, of getting the groups done. So it sounds like that office manager was, was key in getting that going. So where do you start with the groups and sort of what's your vision for how they will fit into the clinic in general? Well, as I started to see more and more needs in my practice, I went to a um, oh, a seminar, this was a couple of years ago, and she made a note of saying that when she was seeing the same thing in the clinic, she just figured out she better put in a group visit for it. So it's kind of always stuck in the back of my head that way. And so as I start to repeat myself in office and see the same thing and realize why I'm running late all the time is because I'm talking about the same thing. It puts in, oh, I need to put in a GI class. And so that's the one we're putting in um, next is the GI class actually, just because I can, when I'm in clinic and just say, there is more information I want you to know. I offer a group class or a group visit on this. Um, this is gonna be the date. And if you can't make that one, let the front office staff know. And then we're kind of trying to figure out the best times. Uh, the one I do right now is generally always on a Wednesday evening and I don't wanna take any more of my evenings out. so I going to put, um, we found out like Monday doesn't work for most of my patients. Uh, just, it wasn't really successful. Friday mornings are. And so we're just kind of playing around the time of day that we're putting a few in just to see what works best. Okay. Tell me a little bit about detox classes, because ultimately that's one of the things that we're talking about here in the functional forum is, is, you know, detox classes and groups of something that's been done for a long time in our industry. And it, you know, it does seem that there's like a synergy with people looking to do something different. They need to learn from each other. And there's so much to learn about, you know, sources of toxicity and how to go through this process. What's been your experience of, of running those and, and what do you have planned for, you know, the first quarter of 2021? So we've got it scheduled to do that detox class. I'm gonna actually break the detox class up into two different ones. Um, one for a little bit more basic, the one for a little bit more advanced. I, you know, when you go to school and, or you, and you go to all of these um, classes, you kind of think everybody knows the same thing. And you know, what's on my Facebook feeds and everything else. It's like, you think that people know that plastics are toxic or phthalates are toxic. And I am shocked to learn that most of my patients don't know those really basic, basic things. And 
the time to go through that to get that interaction is and just go through the basics versus going through a little bit more advanced um, and getting into what patients already know. I think getting that interaction, I had one class that one patient was already doing so much homemade stuff. She was really cooking from scratch and doing a lot of probiotic stuff. Um, whereas other patients were really intimidated by that. But it was interesting because we were able to break things down and, and praise the one person for being able to be so strong there, but also encourage the people that little pieces are, you can do this little piece, but you're really strong somewhere else. So taking the strengths, taking where we're weak and really trying to empower people to take basically choice over what they're doing. Absolutely. And is there anything particularly that you found to be useful in, in, in facilitating like the sort of the peer to peer dynamics in the group, like getting people to engage, getting people to support each other? You know, I think um, the more that we encourage, we praise people, we, um, we validate what they say, helps people be more comfortable. And then they're more willing to say, I'm pretty open with my own story. Um, having cancer diet was probably one of the hardest areas for me, still is the hardest area for me to um, correct and keep on top of. So when I talk about gluten's hard for me to stay away from, they're like, it's for, it is for you too, or sugar or whatever I'm, you know, that I'm relating to them with. It really pulls them in, them in so they're not feeling excluded. They don't feel like they're bad. So oftentimes people feel they're bad or wrong and nobody likes to feel like that. And so I really work on empowerment and I know most of my patients pretty well. And so I can always find something and bring something that they're already good at and pull that in for them. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And are all your group visits one-off sessions with education or do you have like multiple week sessions that you do with patients? Too? I don't right now. Next year, I'm actually adding that. That is my plan next year. Um, I want to be able to add in where there's a just a group that's ongoing. The different formats for that that I've looked at, some of them are insurance based, some of them are not, but trying to get that scheduled out to see what people will commit into, whether it's once a month or um, whether it's twice a month. But that's next year. That's why I want to get that the four part series essentially going. But then also just another group on empowerment of just a healthy lifestyle. I do a lot of emotional coaching, a lot of emotional wellness. And that's really what I want to actually implement next year is but I, I want to do it as more of an ongoing group uh, community type access point versus a group visit that's a little bit more structured where they anybody can ask me questions and open that up. But I, I spend a lot of time in that area and a lot of people come to me for the coaching aspect. So that's why I want to start that part next year. Beautiful. Well, what would you say to uh, like, let's say two different people, like, you know, I guess a nurse practitioner who's sort of sitting there and maybe like you felt a few years ago where you're just sort of working in a practice that is, you know, not completely aligned with the way that you see medicine. And then what would you also say to someone who's maybe making the journey to functional medicine, but has never run a group before? Right now, it's a little bit I think in some ways it's easier, in some ways it's harder. If they have access to Zoom to be putting in, they can start their own thing a little bit on their side. They don't have to follow um, the group they're in. So a lot of the things that I did were outside my traditional office. I was an independent contractor anyway, so I did it under my own business. As an employee, you can stay as an employee and then start your own business as an independent contractor um, that you either uh, fit services somewhere else or you can just start your own business and start doing groups, um, ask the employer, just say, this is what I want to pull in or start doing just Facebook, putting stuff out there and just say, I'm putting a group visit together and this is what it is and this is what we're going to cover. Um, most of us get, I think, uh, um, having a group of people in your office, like talking to 10 people is different than on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom, as we've gotten more and more used to it, that really still gives you that feel of one-on-one -on -one a little bit more um, just because it it feels different than having a lot of people in the room but it's I like both now but start with small groups start with five don't start with 10 don't start with 20 just start with five 
and pick five people that you know pretty well and just say, I'm doing this and start it easy. Don't charge them for the first couple of them that you just get your feel for. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, look, thank you for, for coming on the show and, and sharing a little bit about your experience. You know, we're really excited to see one, you know, nurse practitioners stepping up into their own practices and sort of leading in their communities on this on this uh, level. And then obviously on the second side of it, just to, you know, to see that uh, groups and detox groups and, and ways to really engage new patients into functional medicine who may not be able to afford the, um, you know, the initial cash appointment, I think is super valuable. And it's, uh, it's amazing to create these communities of learners um, that are happening, you know, in clinics all across the country. So thanks so much. If people want to find out more about your practice, where can they go? Southwickintegrativehealing.com. All right. <laughs> it's a long name, but it's what we went with. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being part of it and congratulations on the practice and look forward to seeing the progress in 2021. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. So there was Martha Southwick. Really great to see a practitioner just a couple of years into it and already thriving and loving what they're doing. It's always amazing to me the, uh, you know, the little things that shift a practitioner's practice and obviously having cancer is a big deal and can change your uh, mindset completely. I really wanted to just reinforce a couple of things that she said. One is, you know, the focus of this whole year with last year with groups and now, you know, this year with resilience has got to be access, right? We've got to create access to more people. And one of the things Martha said there that I absolutely loved is just that there are a lot of people out there who need this help, who can't afford a $300 first appointment. Right. So you can go and be Liz Lister and you can build that kind of practice and you'll help a ton of people. And it's an incredible use of your time. But look at Martha as well, like really realizing that she's busy. Of course, she's busy. She, she takes insurance and does integrative medicine. Right. But she can build efficiency and avoid burnout by doing things that she loves to do. And group sessions are efficient and bring back love of practice uh, to medicine. It's a great place to start. So I think there's some really critical points there. And the other thing she said that I think we all have to understand is that the basics, right? People need the basics. And, you know, just think about how many patients you've had where how far into your care with them do you learn that they don't know the simple things about toxins in the environment. And they may be cleaning their house every week with the most toxic stuff. And yet you're trying to work out why you can't get their inflammation to come down. You know, we need baseline education for everyone in the community and it's not coming from the TV. So it has to come from us and our communities. And that's why educating, creating communities of learners is exactly what is necessary for this exact moment in history and this exact moment in medicine. And we have all the tools at our disposal. Now, both of the company, both of the people that you've heard so far have talked about, you know, uh, value that's been added from their company, whichever supplement company we you use, all of the major supplement companies have detoxification packs, programs with educational material that goes along with them, use that super valuable to take advantage of the resources of the companies that you're already partnered with um, to take advantage of there. So uh, we were planning for our third interview to talk a little bit more specifically about technology, but I wanted to actually have an opportunity to bring back in uh, someone who's been on the Functional Forum a number of times and is one of the leaders uh, of the movement in my estimation. Uh, Dr. Shilpa Saxena uh, is one of uh, the leading clinicians in, um, in functional medicine. And I just wanted to take a moment to finish this to really think about sort of the practicality of everything. So this diagram that you might be familiar with from, from presentations, this came from Dr. Shilpa Saxena's group visit toolkit. So you see just in this picture, the difference between going one to one to one, visit to visit to visit, having micro conversations about the same thing with different patients to a group format where you can see there's education on the screen. Um, if it's a billable session with a provider, there may be the provider doing something over here to uh, do what's necessary to make it billable for let's say a 99213. But if you're billing something else, you may not need to do that. And so uh, here is um, Dr. Shilpa Saxena. We did a special interview with her really to talk about what she's doing now because she actually is doing this in January. And we're gonna show you exactly what she's up to and check in with Dr. Shilpa Saxena. We're also gonna talk about how to do this in a virtual environment. Here we go. 
So now we are back with someone who has been helping practitioners just like you to put these kind of events on and create detox groups and group visits of all varieties for a number of years. A warm welcome back to the Functional Forum, Dr. Shilpa Saxena. Welcome, Shilpa. Thank you, James. Thank you for just saying a number of years versus the exact amount of years. It's Although okay. I'm okay with my age because I detox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you look exactly the same from the first moment I saw you. So something is working. So let's jump into it. I really want to uh, get practical with this. You know, we've heard from a couple of doctors who have uh, who are setting up their own uh, detox programs in 2021 in person on insurance, off insurance, group, individual. And um, just love to, to chat with you. Just, I guess, first of all, some context clinically, you know, why is this an important part of every functional integrated medicine practice? Well, in most every curriculum you go to see, whether it's at IFM, A4M, any kind of functional medicine educational organization will uh, teach you about detoxification and the microbiome as core systems that must be balanced for any inflammatory condition to be resolved. And being overweight is an inflammatory condition if you think about it. It's, in, it's a result of inflammation and it's also a cause of inflammation. So detoxification is just one of those core pillars that we must address with any functional medicine patient likely. So you created the toolkits, the group visit toolkits for the Lifestyle Matrix Resource Center, who are one of our sponsors on the show. Which one of those group visit toolkits are the kit to look at specifically for uh, this, uh, you know, for if you wanted to put together something in January? Well, we really like the Healthy Weight for Life. The reason why we call it Healthy Weight for Life for our group visit toolkit name is because we have to meet patients where they are and patients are still finding their solutions through their disease diagnoses or through their symptoms or what their goals are. They might not know that detoxification is at the root of their weight loss issues, but they do understand that they want to lose weight. So when you create a group visit around healthy weight loss and then for life, because I think people know that they're not interested in a temporary loss of weight, they want to keep it off. Now you're starting to intrigue people. And what happens in that group visit toolkit is you get to now start to show your functional medicine prowess on, this is not just about diet and exercise. There, although that's important, there's this other huge principle called detoxification that is at the core of sustaining weight loss and this anti-inflammatory way of life. So in your years of doing these detox programs, what are some clinical tips, tricks, and things that you think are most important for the clinicians who may have either not done a program or more than likely done a program with individual patients, but maybe not put it into a group curriculum? I think one of the things to understand is, number one, you've got to be clear about what you are creating or offering. What is your value proposition? So healthy weight for life. That's the value proposition. Now, what's the structure by which you're gonna fulfill on that value proposition? Because you're asking in general for discretionary income. So make sure it's very clear what people get for the money that they're going to give you, whether it's through insurance or cash, still they need to know what is the cost and what is the structure by which you will get to this goal, healthy weight for life or whatever you're purporting as the benefits of your program. Then I think it's really important in the group setting, you've got to alleviate this potential concern that people have that I don't know if I want something in a group format, maybe I'm too shy, maybe I think I won't get personalized attention. You've got to address that face on by talking about it in the description, talking about it with blogs or blog posts or Facebook, whatever you need to do, or at least in the structure, when you describe why you have a weekly group visit or why you have health coaching available on Facebook, you're saying to address your concerns about personalized care or to get you the personalized answers you need to succeed. You've got to anticipate the need and then put it in your structure. Absolutely. Well, look, I, I want to get really practical now. So if you don't mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen here where we can actually see what you're doing in January, like what you're gonna be doing in just a month's time, which is this uh, masterclass, why detoxing is critical to jumpstarting your weight loss. 
So give us an overview of like how this works, what you're doing, what order you're doing, what to get people, I guess, from your clinic to register into an ongoing group session. Well, for me, it's a little bit different, although I think we can extrapolate how you can make it work in an individual clinic. So Forum Health is a network, a national network. And what we're doing is, is we're trying to not only attract new patients, but also to keep our existing patients invested in our value proposition is form health. So what we've devised is a masterclass. I really like that word. It's a kind of a buzzword these days. And if you are a subject matter expert, if you are in functional medicine and you understand how to do an effective detox program, so you're a master, so have a class. And what the class is designed to do is to give people the credibility and the warmth of like who you are, and the, you know what you're doing so that they have, they turn from like a cold interest to a warm lead. And then they're more likely to be able to pay the money to be able to initiate because they'll understand what are they getting. And the goal for this masterclass is to give some principles of functional medicine that I incorporate in our detox program, but not, not necessarily give away the money, if you will, not give away the secret sauce. You want them to understand that there is a secret sauce and some aspects to it. And then you want them to feel confident to sign up for the program. Then you have a structured program that you get them registered into after you collect payment. And then whatever, if you have a drip campaign, or if you have a certain person who's your champion, who then takes uh, over making sure the structure is followed. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like uh, we've spoken a lot about orientations, but it's almost like an orientation to the group program. So you answer all the questions ahead of time. It's a sales process, you know, and, and you know, it's not just not giving the information away. There's a gap between information and execution. Right. And what you're really doing is saying, look, this is all the information and you know, it's going to be, it's not always easy for people to execute this on this information by themselves. And that's why we've created this thing to make it easy for them to take that next step. And I think that that's, you know, the promise and the value of the group delivered medicine is that it's really taking it from idea to execution. Absolutely. And then you can also in that group format, in that webinar masterclass, talk about the data if you want to on group and you don't have to make it uber scientific but you can actually help people understand that when you get to share your successes and struggles for example there's a lot of data around weight watchers and why it was so successful and it's because there's something about a group format that is above and beyond what you can achieve from even the most personalized individual visits and that is you've got other people's thoughts other people's connection that make your self-efficacy increase. That's the thing is like people have to believe they can do it. And what this masterclass does is teach them the science and then you bring in the value of group. And you can also bring in that the value of group makes the cost lower too for many people. Tell me a little bit about the over and under from your perspective. I mean, I guess so just so we're just clear before we get into that, you know, here you can see it's a Facebook thing set up. You've got a month to recruit people for this class. It's easy to see. There's a link here to see how to sign up. Um, you know, this is a this is something that you can uh, put out on your email list. It's got its own specific um, event, uh, unique URL. Um, you know, random people can come across it, but also you can send it to you on your newsletter. Um, you can also do paid traffic to specific people in certain areas, certain audiences. And this is all stuff that we've, you know, covered in the Practice Accelerator to help people understand. So this is a great starting point, getting people in um, uh, uh, to into your system to, to warm them up. And it may be that they jump straight from this to individualized care. Ultimately, it's just a, an entry point to get their information and uh, start to warm them up. I want to just, I guess, finish on one point, which is I think a lot of practitioners were excited about the group format because they felt they could really like be in a room with people and feel the energy and create the container. Obviously, a lot of this group delivered medicine happening is now happening online. What do you see as the sort of the over under on that as far as like, um, the downside, but then also the, the plus side. The downside is, is there's just a new structure that has to be created. And so that kind of is just extra work. Uh, the upside is, is we find we do a group, a group visit based delivery for another one of our programs at Form Health called BrainRx. 
and we have a landing page for it. People can register there or they can uh, register at their practice site. And then what happens is people are invited to a Zoom conference call basically with me and the BrainRx coach. We have found that people actually love the Zoom format. Like they don't have to drive somewhere. They're right there in the comfort of their own home. It's kind of interesting. It's like people want to be with other people, but they still want the safety and security of their home. And that's kind of what Zoom affords. And if anything, everybody is getting more and more used to Zoom as a way of life, as a way of communication. So what we found is that we have more people willing to take on programs because it's actually more convenient to do it virtually for them. We just create, we have to create this engagement online, which is a little bit different than creating it on site. Like I can't serve the hummus and the carrots and the mint water the way that I can on site, but there's the equivalence of what I can do, you know, online to make it fun for the people. But we are seeing just as much success with our virtual group visit format as we did with our on site. That's great news. And thank you so much for, you know, just, I guess, for continuing to lead in this whole, whole area, Shilpa, you know, when we met seven years ago, this was so new. And I think it took a little while for people to get their heads around it. But I think, you know, more and more what I see out there today is people really realizing that there's, you know, not just efficiency, but efficacy, you know, in these group delivered models. And uh, I'm excited to see what people come up with in January. So, Thank you so much for uh, for being part of it. If you want to check out the Lifestyle Matrix Resource Center, we'll have the, the link um, just below here so you can get the group visit toolkit. You can get it digitally tomorrow. You can start planning for your group for January, February, um, and uh, and uh, get some people in because ultimately, you know, we've got a, uh, a significant issue that we have to deal with and we're in a great position to do it. We just have to deliver it in a way that is palatable and effective. So thank you for your continued advocacy. Thank you, James. And I just wanted to remind people that we understand having the group visit toolkit does not make you do a group visit. So there is an implementation team at the Lifestyle Matrix Resource Center that will do a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you and your team, whoever you want there, to be able to personalize how to get this done in your practice. And the way that we have it is that when you invest in the group visit, by just doing one group visit and having a very small amount of people attend, you've paid for the group visit. So we're really interested in you tasting the success of what a group medical appointment can create so that it's kind of like delivering your first baby that you're like addicted now. You got to get, you got to go deliver more babies because it felt so good. Amazing. Well, it's co completely agree. Check out the links below. Dr. Shilpa Saxena, thanks so much for being part of the Functional Forum again, and we'll see you soon. Thanks much, James. All right, Dr. Shilpa Saxena, always a source of real wisdom when it comes to running a successful functional medicine practice. You've been doing it for a long time. Like you heard there, it was almost... It was over seven years ago, it was October 2013 that I first heard her lecture on group delivered functional medicine. And um, over the last two years, my kind of obsession with it has gone through the roof because I'm here to help everyone. And I think we all are to a certain degree. Uh, but the good news is that you can really choose your own adventure. And today there are examples of successful models doing functional medicine on insurance and in, uh, in cash. Um, if you are watching this and you run a high volume insurance practice and you're interested in groups, but you don't know how to execute it, I'm going to make a special offer for you. If that fits your bill, you can go to, uh, if you can go to james at GoEvoMed, that's my direct email. If you're working in a high volume insurance based practice, you're interested in running groups, but you just don't know how to do it. I've got a very special offer for you. I hope some of you will take me up on it. All right, so let's just you know wrap up here with a couple of thoughts. So for those of you I mentioned earlier, meetup.functionalforum.com. I know there's not a lot of meetups going up in person, but we are seeing still um, lots of virtual groups grow. Uh, if you run a meetup group or you want to run a meetup group, it's a good time to get in touch because we are pairing um, sponsors and meetup hosts to really build this next uh, generation of meetups next year. This week on the uh, on the blog, if you go to goevomed.com slash blog, we shared this incredible article called COVID Antifragility, Trusting Our Strength in Uncertain Times by Nate 
Doramal. And Nate is an incredible writer. This was a wonderful article that we decided to publish just because it was so consistent with all of our thinking and so consistent with everything that we've been doing for the last seven years. And he writes this whole article about how fragile we are and really how fragile are we and COVID and issues of anti-fragility and how we can build strength in community. And this is exactly what we're talking about here tonight. Building these meetup groups, building these group detoxes. This is a way that we can create community resilience. Nate says towards the end of his article, you've got to go and read the whole thing because there's clinical stuff in there, all kinds of great stuff. He says, a new integrated mindset is needed for public health in the 21st century, one that incorporates greater systems and complexity thinking. Our bodies are not discrete parts that function on their own. We are an integrated system that thrives within our environment and within this complex system of systems we thrive. With this mindset, we are li the little choices we make in our lives matter a lot when compounded over time. In this mindset, we are first-hand participants in health as opposed to being mere fragile potential carriers of the disease. We are far more than just our genetics and our environment. Our intentions, thoughts, and actions matter a lot. I couldn't agree more. He, he finishes by going back to Anti-Fragile, which is the book by uh, Nassim Taleb. He says, the final thought, Wind extinguishes a candle and energizes a fire. Likewise, randomness, uncertainty, chaos, you wanna use them, not hide from them. You wanna be the fire and wish for the wind. Let us make ourselves and our people strong. Listen, integrative and functional medicine is not a candle, right? Integrative and functional medicine is a fire. And right now, the wind that is COVID is knocking people in our direction and can energize the fire significantly. All we have to do is to set our sail in the right direction and take advantage of it. And this is an exact moment where it could be really possible. And, you know, COVID with all of the issues of making in-person care more difficult has made virtual care a lot easier and a lot more people are into it. And that gives all of us an opportunity to really create functional medicine systems that scale. And I hope that wherever you are, whatever you, however you're hearing this, that you start to really think about what you are capable of in a new way and think about it in a, a different kind of a time frame. You know, there's a great quote that says, you always overestimate what you can do in one year, but you underestimate what you can do in 10. And I think that for everyone listening here tonight, I hope that you can really reimagine what is going to be possible for you in the next 10 years. This brings the end of a seven year cycle of the Functional Forum. We've done over 85 episodes and a lot of ground has been taken in the, in the meantime. In fact, next Thursday, I'm doing a special webinar this Thursday, actually, with Dr. Jeff Glad, who was the original you know, sort of visionary in a certain way behind the micro practice revolution. He came and gave that talk on the third ever functional forum with Mark Hyman. And he talked that day about, imagine if everywhere there was a farmer's market, there was an integrated micro practice. That's what we've been trying to facilitate here for the last seven years. We're excited to seeing people like Martha Southwick stepping up, people like Shilpa Saxena continuing to lead and hopefully you'll be next. We'd love to help you with whatever you're doing. You can get in touch with the Lifestyle Matrix Resource Center. As I said before, if you do take insurance, you have a high volume practice, we would love uh, to connect with you with some interesting projects that we have to make it a lot easier for you to deliver on these virtual group visits. In the meantime, thank you so much for being part of the Functional Forum. It means a lot to us that you continue to watch the show. Super excited for what's